Hello, everybody. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. Before we get into the episode today, I did want to take a moment to give a viewer shout out to one of our viewers here, one of our friends here on Esoteric Atlanta named Tracy Woodman. Now, like Adam, whose book link is down in the description box below, Tracy is also an author. And um, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about Tracy because she has written some pretty interesting books about mind crimes, which seems to be pretty much the gist of this great awakening, right? So Tracy said, when I was a little girl, I would sit on my bed and write stories. I don't know what happened to them. Sometimes I wish I'd saved them, if only to have a good laugh. I'm sure they weren't very good. I mean, I must have been maybe 11 at the time, but I remember I wanted to grow up to be a writer. And to be honest with you, Tracy, that's what I wanted to be when I was a little girl too. When I was in the fifth grade, I wrote a book called The Golden Glow Cookie Jar. My mom still might have that book somewhere. We had to write it. I think it was in the fifth grade. It was for some competition and I actually won the award for the best story. I wrote a story about a cookie jar that a little girl finds in a new home. And this cookie jar glows this golden color. Every time it glows, she would open the cookie jar and there would be an item in the cookie jar that if she picked it up would transport her back to historical moments in time. So even in the fifth grade, I was a little bit of a history nerd. But Tracy, I totally feel you. I was the same girl. What started out as a challenge to write a book so I could say I wrote a book became a hobby and is now the fulfillment of a childhood dream. In the past few years, I have written three books, two of which are part of what is called Operation Mind Crimes series. I'm working on book three now. Some may call this series historical fiction because it deals with our recent history. The stage is set by revisiting the politics of the 1960s. Many may think that I, what I write is conspiracy theory. That's okay. Although I can tell you that most of what I've written is verifiable. The spirit series exposes some of the secret government programs, such as the story is told from the viewpoint of a young family who was first affected by the Vietnam struggle, then by the realization that the government is using college students, women, and children as experiments to find ways to manipulate the mind. Mind control, brainwashing, manipulation, manipulating the mind, call it what you will. The lives of the Stewart family are permanently altered due to these programs. The stories which expose these truths is told from the perspective of the Stewart family. Although the family is fictitious, much of which they experience has happened in real life. By reading the series, you will be sharing their experiences and emotions of living through these times. I know many who were in the military during the Vietnam struggle. Many hesitate to read the series because they don't want to relive the pain. I understand completely. I want to let you know that the books mostly tell the story of what went on in the States and as witnessed by civilians. There is a chapter towards the end of the first book, The War Within, that might be painful to read. If you do want to read the book, please note that chapter 45 does take place in the Pacific. It is a short chapter. You might want to skip over it, although there is some important information in the chapter that rounds out the story. I am not a veteran. So no matter what I've done for research, I will never understand what you went through. I try to do justice to all the veterans in the series and will continue to do that as a series evolves. I dedicate the first two books to the military and those who have suffered due to crimes. My heart goes out to all of you. In addition to the Operation Mind Game series, I am writing other books. Remember the Kiss tells the story of a second chance while incorporating the idea of reincarnation within the lives of the characters. I'd like to thank Nora Jones for allowing me to use her song, Come Away With Me, in the book. If you are interested in learning more about my books, you can visit my website at www.authorlywoods.com. On my website, you will find my recent work, and you will find the works that will be coming soon. You can read my blog and find my research page. I share the research page so you can see the resources I use when writing my book. You will find many links where you can navigate your, your way to begin your own research as you continue to awaken while remembering to continue to work on yourself, as Bryce says. I want to thank all of you who support my work. While I write fiction, I will try to be sure I incorporate the element of human emotion into my work. My desire is to bring out the best in humanity, even if the situation is dire. I'm hoping to bring healing through what I write. It may take me a little while to realize what the, that looks like but I will continue to work towards helping all of us to move into the light. 
Thank you so much, Tracy. I will be placing all of Tracy's links down in the description box below. I myself am looking forward to reading your series. And I want to say too, if there's anybody else out there that has some work that they would like for me to advertise on this channel, please email me. This channel isn't just about me. It never has been just about me. This channel is about us. We are all just walking each other home. And so I am so proud to be able to showcase anybody's work, especially any person that's out there working for the betterment of humanity. All right, guys, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mystery Monday. Of course, my name is Bryce here on Esoteric Atlanta. And for those who have been following me for a while, once again, you know I'm not in Atlanta right now. This is not my normal set. So this Monday, or Mystery Monday rather, is going to run a little bit differently uh, just because of the circumstances. But I'm super, super, super excited about this story. Not excited because it's a super creepy story, and so I feel kind of bad for the victims, but it is. It is a story that was voted on by you guys because today obviously is Halloween and, um, you know, two hours from now, from when this airs on my channel, we will be over on Aquarius Rising Africa with our friend Shanti Morney and of course Stephanie to go into a deeper discussion over this topic, this mystery. Um, but again, this was voted on by you guys. I asked last Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa if you guys for Halloween wanted to look more into Ed and Lorraine Warren's cases or if you wanted to cover this mysterious forest in Japan and you guys picked the mysterious forest in Japan. Um, with that being said, because of the content of this story, we're going to have to shoot this over on Rumble. So if you're on YouTube right now, then follow the link down in the description box below to join us over on the Rumble page so we don't have to censor ourselves. And if you're on Rumble, just keep watching right now as we move forward. So again... Today 